Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to the uh, practice video for Operations Research 1 in Do 323. And uh, today we're going to be using the simplex method to manually solve and obtain an optimal solution for a maximization problem. Uh, this is the maximization problem that uh, we'll be working with. It's uh, z equals x1 plus x uh, plus 2x2 plus 4x3 and subject to these constraints, right? So the first part, uh, the first step, as always, is going to be to write the augmented form of uh, the constraints. So what does that mean? Let's go ahead and write that over here. Augmented form. So for each constraint, we're going to have an augmented form equivalent, um, except for the non-negativity constraint. That one we're not going to touch really that much. Um, so basically, in a maximization uh, in a maximization problem, you'll notice that typically um, the constraints are oh, on the left the left side of the constraints are always smaller than or equal to the right side of the constraints. You'll find situations where professors will give you uh, problems way, when that is not the case in a maximization problem, and then there are techniques to convert them to the standard form of the left side is smaller than or equal than the right side. So in the augmented form, what we're trying to achieve is to convert all of these inequalities to equalities. <coughs> Excuse me. And then how to do that? If the left side is smaller than or equal to the right side, we have to add something, some sort of variable or, or something of that nature, to make this inequality inequality. So what we're going to add is what is known as slack variables. Uh, and we're going to have as many slack variables as we have constraints. So let's do the first one. It's going to be 3x1 plus x2 plus 5x3, plus the first slack variable. Let's denote it as s for slack, 1. And now because we have that little bit extra, whatever it may be, it's going to just equal 10. And we do the same for the other two constraints, 4x2 plus x3 plus s2 equals to 8. Now we have a, we increment the index of the slack variables because it's the second slack variable, s2. Uh, and finally, we'll have 2x1 plus x3 plus s3 equals uh, 7. And as per convention, we will have that all x, I'll use some, some uh, notation xi, all the x's are big, bigger than or equal to 0, and all the si's are bigger or equal to 0. For all i equals 1, 2, 3, as there's 3 of each of the type of variables. And again, for all i, 1, 2, and 3. This just means that this means that. It's just a different way of writing it. You'll get familiar with this as you come through the, uh, come up through the, the program and the degree. <clears throat> so next, we're going to have to write the dictionary method. Um, before we do that, just a little explanation. Um, what we're going to have is, uh, at first, what we want to do is take these three new constraints, these augmented form constraints, and equate all of the non-basic variables to zero. What are the non-basic variables? As you'll find in the course, it will be taught that the x's are going to be your non-basic variables, and the s's are going to be your basic variables. So what you will do is you find a basic feasible, a possible solution by equating all of the non-basic variables to, to 0, and then you're going to be left with the basic variables, s1, s2, s3, equal to 10, 8, and 7, respectively. And this will be in a basic feasible solution. So a basic feasible solution can be written as 
this basic feasible solution can be written as the first three variables, x1, x2, x3, equal to 0, right? So it's going to be 0, 0, 0. And the last three variables are going to just equal these values. So 10, 8, and 7. So with this, not, uh, with this basic feasible solution, all of these constraints are respected. They're not violated. And we can actually plug these values if we add the stack variables to the maximization friction and obtain some sort of um, uh, some sort of uh, a solution, a valid solution. But this will not be the optimal solution. So what we will do next is we're going to use this basic feasible solution to create what is known as the dictionary form of the constraints. So let's go ahead and do that. Remember our x1 x2 and x3 currently equal to zero as far as the first version of the dictionary form is concerned. All right, so now that we have the original function with the constraints, the augmented form with the slack variables added to create those equalities, we have the basic feasible solution where our non-basic variables x1, x2, x3 equal to zero. And our basic variables, s1, s2, s3, equal to whatever they would equal if everything else here equals to 0. So 10, 8, and 7, as we have it over here. We're going to use this basic feasible solution um, to create our dictionary form, which is going to help us out as we go through the problem. So we're going to write the dictionary form over here. And it's going to correspond, once again, to each of these constraints like this. Dictionary. Uh, so for the first one, it's going to be, uh, we're, by the way, for the dictionary form, I forgot to mention, we are ultimately solving for the slack variables. So we're going to have s1 equals 10 minus everything else that's over here, and the same thing for all the other constraints, as you will see. So it'll be s1 equals 10, and then we bring everything to the right side of the equation minus 3x1, minus x2, uh, minus 5x3. Uh, S2 is going to equal 8, uh, minus x1, minus 4x2, minus x3. S3 equals 7, minus 2 x1 minus x3. <clears throat> so now uh, for the next part, we're going to create a, uh, an if-then uh, uh, type of scenario where we find out the maximum value of our first entering variable. But our first entering variable will have to first be decided. Um, by convention, uh, we will use the entering variable with the highest coefficient in the objective function because we're maximizing uh, the objective function. The minimization problem, things will change. We'll see that in another video. Uh, the principle of the entering variable is that, and with the simplex method as a whole, is that we create this situation where everything equals to zero except for our slack variables. And then we start entering variables one at a time and finding out what their maximum value can be without violating any constraints, right? So, and using the slack variables as, as a basis for violation of constraints. So our entering variable here will be x3 as it has a coefficient of four, which is the highest of all three, uh, and, uh, of all three non-basic variables. Let's go ahead and write that over here. Entering variable equals x3 because it has, again, the highest coefficient in the objective function. Um, next, we're going to start over here and we will write out our if then uh, comparisons to figure out the maximum value of x3 using our slack variable. So remember, x1 and x2 still equal 0. 
So we will have uh, the dictionary form rewritten as just the, uh, the parts that don't equal zero, therefore the 10, which is a constant, and for example, for the first one, minus five x three. So let's go ahead and rewrite that. By the way, this will be the first iteration. This is where the iterations begin, now that we have our initial setup. And it will go as so. S1 is gonna equal 10, minus three times zero, that's zero, we won't write it, minus zero, that's again zero, we won't write it because x1, x2 equals zero, and then minus five x3. Then S2 will be similarly, eight. Again, x1 equals zero, x2 equals zero. We omit these, minus x3, and S3 is seven minus x3. <clears throat> so now we're left with three constraints in this, um, in this scenario where, uh, where the only other variable besides our slacks is uh, x3. And we're trying to solve for x3 um, to see what its maximum value can be. So how to do so? Let's set up an if then kind of, um, initially this is what helped me do it. Um, eventually you'll be doing it much quicker than that in your head and stuff like that. So we're gonna have an if column over here and the then column over here. So we're trying to figure out for what value of x3 in each of these equations will s1 be smaller than these three constants. So for, because it's a subtraction obviously. So for example, for the first one, uh, if we have 10 over here, five times two is gonna give me that S1 is gonna be zero, right? Because 10 minus five times two is zero. So then we will have that if x3 is bigger than two, right? Strictly bigger. If it's even a fraction bigger, then this is gonna result in a negative, this equality, this uh, S1 is gonna be a negative, and therefore it violates this constraint because S1 cannot be smaller than zero has to be zero or bigger. <clears throat> so we write it as x3, if it equals to two, then S1, uh, S1 will be smaller than zero, which means that the maximum value so far of x3 is two. But we have to do it for all three of these equations. So we have that in this case, x3, if it's bigger uh, than eight, then S2 is smaller than zero. And then finally, in the last one, if X3 is bigger than seven, then S3 is smaller than zero. So now, out of these, because this, this is X3, X3, this is the same variable. It's not gonna be three different variables. It can only have one value. So the biggest value that it can take out of these, the maximum value that we can give to x3 is two, the smallest one, right? Because it, eight is bigger than two, seven is bigger than two. So this is, two is gonna be the one that kind of binds it to, it constrains x3. So that is our maximum value for, this is our maximum value for, for x2. Therefore, our leaving variable, the variable we're gonna be taking out, so what we do is we enter these three variables and we take out one of these three depending on this, one of these three variables. We kind of replace our slacks with our, uh, with our, with our non-basic, our basic variables with our non-basic variables. So our leaving variable will therefore be, therefore, leaving 
variable will be uh, will be the corresponding variable with the maximum value of x3 or the non-basic variable. And in this case, it's s1. So not our leaving variable is s1. So now we have to rewrite, <coughs> pardon me, we have to rewrite uh, the constraint, which corresponds with this, which corresponds with uh, with this, and therefore with this, as, uh, as a isolating for our entering variable, right? What does x3 equal based on this, on, on this, um, on these, what we found out from, from this part? So we're going to have our constraint as, so we could put it over here, re right constraint. And it will be this one. Uh, so we can have it as x3 is going to equal 2 minus I will explain in a second, I skipped the steps of isolating x3, and I'll explain how everything was done in just a second. x2 over 5, and minus s1 over 5. So what I've done here is I've basically taken the corresponding constraint over here. Well, these are the same, so you can take either one and I've solved for x3. So I put 5x3, I, I left it on this side, I subtracted everything on the other side, x1, I'm oh sorry, s1, s1, x2, 3x1, and then I divide, and the 10 is already there, and then I divide it by five because of the coefficient here to isolate x3, and that's why you have these fractions, and 10 divided by five is uh, obviously two. So next what we'll do is we will, now that we have the value of this x3, we will take it and we will plug it back into our objective function as well as our, uh, our uh, constraints uh, in the, either the augmented form or the dictionary form. It, it doesn't make a big difference, we can use the dictionary form. So we can go ahead and do this. Our new objective function will go as so. So we have, it's not our new objective function, but our, our, the one that we'll be using for the moment. Uh, it will be like this. Oh, pardon me. I rewrote max twice. So we will have um, it's going to equal to z x1 plus 2x2 plus, and now we have 4 times x3, but our x3 is going to equal this expression. So 4 times uh, 2 minus 3 over 5x1. x1 uh, minus x2 over 5 minus s1 over 5. Uh, now we're going to do the same for our, uh, our constraints. Uh, just we have to keep in mind uh, that we will have, <coughs> pardon me, uh, we will have values of of s inside of our inside of s1 and s2 and s3 in uh, inside of our constraints so we use these ones uh, and we can do it uh, as such for the first constraint we're going to keep what we already have because it already has taken into account x3 and like this new value of x3 so we could keep that as is 
I'm just going to go ahead and rewrite that over here. So it'll be subject to, these are the constraints, right? It'll be subject to x3 equals 2 minus 3 over 5, 5, 5, um, x1 minus x2 over 5 minus s1 over 5. That's our first constraint. Our second constraint is going to be s2. And it's, we're just going to take it directly from the dictionary. And it's going to be 8 minus x1 minus 4x2. And then just simply minus the expression for x3, which we have here as, there's a minus, so I will put a, because uh, minus plus minus is going to make, for now I'll put a parenthesis, uh, 2 minus 3 over 5 x1 minus x2 over 5. minus uh, s1 over 5. Uh, and then the last one is going to be s3. And it's 7 minus 2x1 minus x3. So 7 minus 2x1 and minus again the expression that we found for x3. I won't, for, a, for the time being, keep including the non-negativity constraints, but you should have them in uh, exams, quizzes, assignments, etc., uh, to follow convention. Here we're running out of space, but yes, they're always there. Take a moment, pause the video, look over the work that we've done so far, and when we come back, uh, we're gonna, first of all, uh, multiply all this through, and, and there's gonna be some stuff that's gonna get added together, the x1 and x1 over here, x2, x2, etc. And then we're gonna proceed with uh, finding out if x3 equals to two is gonna give us an optimal solution, and uh, how, we, how we decide on that. So take a moment, and then when we come back, we're gonna, we're gonna have done that. All right, so now that you've had a moment to take a look at the work that we had done so far, uh, what have we done? We had our original uh, problem. We created the augmented uh, constraints. We then, uh, with slack variables and all that, we, have our, we had our dictionary form, we decided on an exiting variable, x3. We found out what its maximum value can be without violating any constraints. Then we solved for that x3, which we have over here, and then we plugged it into the objective function as well as our constraints, remember, with the slacks included, right? So we have that as so. The next step would be to find out if this x1 and 2 equaling to 0 and x3 equaling to 2, as we found out previously, uh, is an, giving us an optimal, like feasible and optimal solution. So the way to do so in a, the simplex method in a for a maximization problem is that when you multiply this through in the objective function and you simplify all of this, we're gonna want all of the coefficients of the variables, for all the variables, to be negative. The constant is not gonna matter. There's gonna be a constant in here. That's not gonna matter. Um, if it's negative or positive, we want the coefficients to be strictly negative. Otherwise, we have to run another iteration. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. We can do this up here. So this is going to be this, but 
condensed, like everything multiplied through and added and subtracted, etc. So we are going to have uh, we're going to have uh, maximization of z equals eight, right? Because we're going to have uh, four times two is going to give us a constant of eight uh, minus seven. Oh, pardon me, this is a five. So seven over five x one. So that's just going to be, if you multiply this through, 12 fifths. One minus 12 fifths is going to give you 7 fifths, my negative 7 fifths. So, so far, so good. This x1, this coefficient, is indeed negative. Uh, but then when we find out for x, the coefficient of x2, it's going to be plus 6 fifths x2 minus 4 fifths s1. Now we already know that this is, we're going to have to do another iteration. We have that positive coefficient, but we still have to complete this because we're going to use it for our second iteration. So let's go ahead and do that. Subject two. <clears throat> the first constraint is just as what we had found out for x, the expression for x3 that we've been plugging in. So it's two minus three over five x1 minus x2 over 5 minus s1 over 5. The second constraint is going to be s2 equals to 8. Oh, pardon me. I was just copying it down instead of actually multiplying through. So it's going to be minus 2, 6. 8 minus 2 is 6 minus 2 over 5 x1 minus 19 over 5 x2 uh, plus s1 over 5. Uh, finally, we're going to have uh, s3 equals 5 minus 7 over 5x1 plus x2 over 5 plus s1 over 5. <clears throat> and now we essentially are going to do uh, the same thing as what we did in the first iteration, but using this as our basis. Um, and this will be our new dictionary, right? So let's go ahead and write that so that as we do the iteration, it's not forgotten. This is our new dictionary. Um, you're actually not really going to use do it for the first constraint because it was the subject of the last uh, iteration. Uh, sorry. And so this will be new dictionary. Okay, this is our new dictionary. And so we move forward in finding, first of all, what is going to be our entering variable. Let's go ahead and start our iteration two over here. Iteration two. Okay. Um, what will be our entering variable? If you want, you could pause the video and try to decide that for yourself to get a little bit of practice. Um, but spoiler alert, I'll give it to you right now. Uh, and it's going to be uh, x2, right? We, we look at our uh, objective function here. What is the highest optimal value as a coefficient for a variable? And it is 6 over 5, right? There are no other, everything else is either negative or a constant without a variable. So 6 over 5. Entering variable. variable equals x2. Um, we can omit the first constraint, as we mentioned before. And uh, then we're going to have the if-then uh, scenario that what we did before, except for we're going to 
run it only for these two Slack variables because uh, keeping in mind that everything that isn't either these two Slacks, Slack one, uh, two and S2 and S3, um, or X2, because that's our entering variable, everything else in these two is gonna equal to zero. So X1 is gonna equal to zero. S1 is, was our leaving variable from the previous iteration, so that equals zero now. And we're entering X2 and trying to find out what, it, what maximum value it can take on. So, uh, so let's go ahead and find that out. So entering variable is X2. So we're gonna have if and then. <clears throat> so in the first constraint, um, or in the second constraint rather, uh, we're gonna have uh, S2 equals six minus zero and minus uh, zero. So ultimately, it's going to be, so these equal to zero, uh, this is gonna equal to zero, and this is gonna equal to zero, and you're gonna be left with six minus 19 over five x2 equals to s2. Um, and if you, iso if you do the math, um, you will find out that if, the same as before, same as the first iteration, that if x2 is bigger than 30 over 19, right? So like uh, you basically wanna equate the six to whatever this product is. So how are you gonna do that? You're gonna multiply the six by five to get the fractional, uh, the same fraction and uh, divide by 19, right? So if, S2, uh, if x2 is bigger than 30 over 19, if you multiply this through, uh, 19 over five by, times 13 over 19, it's gonna equal six. If it's bigger than that, then our S2 is gonna be smaller than zero. So um, now that we know for the third constraint, S3 equals to five minus seven over five X1 plus X2 over five plus S1 over five, uh, we know that X1 the X1 term and the S1 term will equal to zero because in this iteration, those equal to zero. S1 left in the first iteration, which means it equals to zero. And X1 hasn't entered yet. So once again, the same as the previous, uh, the previous uh, constraint in the dictionary for S2, we need to find out for what value of the entering variable X2 will this time S3 be less than zero, and this is where it gets a little bit trickier, but it's not that big a deal. So what we'll find out here, because of this addition, what we'll be left with is S3 equals to five plus X2 over five, which means that with respect to X S3, there is no value for X2 uh, that can result in S3 being negative and not violate the constraints because that would entail that x2 will have to be negative uh, 25 or, or more than negative 25, 26, 20, negative 27, 28, 20. So because you want it to be divided by five and then five minus, let's say x2 equals negative 25, five minus negative 25 over five is negative five, then s3 is gonna equal to zero. But we have it here that x2 cannot be a negative, right? The non-negativity constraints. Which means that basically with respect to x2, uh, s3, x2 is unbounded with respect to s3. So, which means that it can, it can be any positive value, but as mentioned in the first iteration, we take the smallest the maximum value is gonna be the small of, like, of the entering variable is gonna be the smallest value of these uh, if then uh, comparisons. So our maximum value for X2 is gonna be 30 over 19. And therefore our leaving variable is gonna be 
S2, right? Because it's the corresponding uh, basic variable, slack. So leaving variable is going to be S2. Now our S2 is going to equal to zero. <clears throat> and then we move forward. Um, the same, we proceed the same way as what we did in the first iteration. When we solved for this, we basically take the, uh, the constraint in question. So here it's the S2 constraint. And we solve for our entering variable x2. So I'm not going to do all the math. I'm just going to directly write the, this expression, but solving for x2. Just putting everything on the other side and uh, all these, oh, sorry, and then multiplying by 5 divided by 19. So it's going to go like this. x2 is going to equal 30 over 19. Uh, 30 over, yeah, exactly, because the 6 multiplied by 5, 30 over 19. Um, minus 2x1 divided by 19 plus s1 over 19 uh, minus 5 over 19 uh, s2. All right. Okay, so next, um, this is in iteration two. If you recall, the next step, as usual, is to take this expression and, uh, and plug it back into our objective function, which is over here. And we can do this over here, and, and as well as our constraints, uh, including the first constraint, which we omitted last time. So let's start with the objective function. And if all of the coefficients are negative, then uh, this is going to be our optimal solution. And we don't need to spend time in plugging it into the constraints. Let's go ahead and, and see what happens there. We're going to have, once we plug this expression, this expression into in for x2. All right, so we're going to have, I'll use a different color. Uh, we're going to have max z is going to equal 8 minus 7 over 5 x1 plus um, and then I will write it here. What's it going to be? Plus, I'll actually write it on the bottom. That's all right. It's still part of the objective function. Plus 6 over 5. Uh, and then we plug this in. So it's 30 over 19 minus 2x1 over 19 plus s1 over 19 minus 5s2 over 19. All right. And then if we, uh, if we expand this, it's going to, it's, as in, not expand, but multiply every the 6 over 5 through and then add it to the uh, other variable. It's going, going to give us uh, maximization of z equals 188 divided by 19 minus 29x1 uh, over 19 minus 14 uh, s1 over 19 and minus uh, 6 
Uh, yes, that is five nine yes. Six over nineteen uh, as two. And there you go. All of the coefficients are negative for all the variables. So we know that uh, we know that x one equals to zero and x two equals to 30 over 19 is optimal. So we found out that x1 equals 0 and x2 equals 30 over 19 is going to give us an optimal solution. but we still have to figure out what the value for x3 is. Um, it obviously cannot be 2 or greater, so it would have to be uh, 2 or smaller. In fact, it can't even be 2. Right? So what we're going to do is where the way to find out the value for x3 is just simply by uh, plugging, it, uh, plugging our values for x1, x2, and uh, we knew that S1 equals to zero because we, it was the leaving variable of last iteration, so it equals to zero. Um, X1 hasn't entered yet, so it still equals to zero. And X2, we found the value for it. We just plug it into this constraint, we find out X3. So that's going to go like this. X3 is gonna equal two minus three over five times zero, right? Because X1 equals zero, minus uh, 30, uh, sorry, uh, 30 over 19, uh, uh, where is it, sorry, 30 over 19 over 5. So it's going to be 30 over 19 divided by 5, plugging in x2 uh, here, x2 and divided by 5. The value for x2. Uh, and then it's the final one is just going to be uh, S1 which equals 0. 0 divided by 5 is going to equal 0. And we're going to, this is going to yield a value for x3 of 32 over 19. So 30 over 19 and 32 over 19 is 1 point something. Um, the final step, so just to clarify, our optimal solution as far as the values of the axis is going to be 0 for x1, 30 over 19 for x2, 32 over 19 for x3. This is our optimal solution as far as the values of the variables. But of course, just to put a bow on it, we're going to plug them into the original objective function <clears throat> uh, and, uh, and get uh, uh, what the optimal value of the objective function is. Also, remember, if you want to check if these values make sense, plug them in here and you will find that these are going to equal almost, this is going to equal almost 8, this one is going to equal 10, this one is going to be well below 7 because this is 0, x3 is 1 point something, 32 over 19, it's well below 7. So it's, the, you, the idea is to not violate the constraints, obviously. Um, but if you plug in these values into the objective function. So it's going to be maximize uh, z equals to 0 for x, 1, plus 2 times 30 over 19, uh, plus 4 times 32 over 19. And uh, z max the optimal value is going to be uh, 188 over 19 or about 9.895. So that's it. That is the simplex method. I hope that you enjoyed this process. Um, it will be much quicker once you put a little, a little bit of practice in. Thank you.